very common after you've finished up with the uh, heating system to find the water heater very close to it. Not all the time, but probably most of the time. There's certain things that you need to look for in the water heater, just like you would have looked for in the heating system. If it doesn't have the right components, that's a problem. The second thing that we'll do then is to make sure that those components are doing what they're designed to do. What we finished up with also on the other, uh, a few moments ago was the water system. So as we begin to assess the water system, it continues over here at the water heater. If you'll notice over at the water meter, there's a nice one inch pipe coming in from the city supply of water. But after the water meter, it reduces to a three quarter inch pipe, very common. You don't want to see it any less than a three quarter inch pipe, otherwise we're gonna have marginal to low water pressure in most instances. The only exception to that might possibly be a very small home with very few plumbing fixtures in it. When you've come over to, from the water meter to supply the hot water heater with its supply of water, we would never reduce that three-quarter inch pipe. We'd bring it in in a full three-quarter inch pipe. And then as we go out of the water heater, we also would continue going out with a three-quarter inch pipe. As we begin to tee off from these mains, eventually we'll tee off in some half-inch piping, and in some instances, maybe even a three-eighths inch pipe. But nonetheless, the size and the design of these pipes is huge to whether or not we're going to have a lot of leaking going on or possibly reductions in water pressure, either today or in the future. Don't forget that as you look at water piping, many times you're going to run into valves. Here's an example of a cold water valve for the water heater. When you dump your cold water supply into the water heater, we do, or the building codes, do require that you have a cold water shutoff. The purpose of that is to isolate the fixture if we ever need to replace it. So, as we look at the water heater, this happens to be a gas one. There are electric water heaters, but this pipe becomes a very important part of the water heater. It has to slope right, it has to be the right size, it has to have the right connections. Uh, if you'll recall in the classroom, we said each connection has to have three screws. It is that important. This is a part of the system that can harm the occupants if it's not done right. So it's one of those non-negotiables. We want to make sure it's right. As we move around the, the water heater, you'll also notice that there's going to be some gas controls. Uh, good home inspectors will turn that thermostat up, remember what the original setting was, and let the system run. Sit back and listen for a little while. Remember, we use our ears too. Because after a little bit, maybe 10, 15, 20 seconds, you want to listen for any noise in the water heater tank. Noise would indicate a buildup of corrosion in the tank. If you find that noise on, on a particular inspection, it's usually telling us that the water heater is reaching the end of its useful life. So certainly that would be something you would want to mark into your inspection report. Also, a very important component of the water heater, from a safety perspective, is over here. It's the temperature pressure relief valve. Hot water expands. If there's no faucet calling for water and the burner system is misoperating, uh, you'll continue to heat water and you'll not be draining any of it out of the tank. Uh, the purpose of the temperature pressure relief valve is to release that pressure so that the tank wouldn't explode. Doesn't happen often, but there's been examples where this or a water heater has exploded and taken off because of a faulty or maybe even not having a temperature pressure relief valve. Quite frankly, it has the capability of destroying the entire home. Tell your people, test it once a year so that they make sure that it's always in operating condition. Once you've looked at the water heater, you've sized it. That's on the manufacturer's data tag. And once you've determined its age, we'll show you how to do that in class. I neglected to mention on the furnaces, we do the same thing with furnaces, although that's above and beyond what normal industry standards require of us, we at Kaplan like to recommend that you do it because quite frankly, if I told you your water heater is 15 years old, 
even if it's operating right, that tells the people something. It certainly tells them that it's on the downside of its useful life.